aren't the new stations great? I was so thrilled when they arrived and it just makes the whole church feel more complete, I think. And they're so beautiful. Um, when we pray the Stations of the Cross now, I think we'll give a more vivid picture of what's actually happening from station to station. I told you that they came from a parish, in, a Polish parish in Philadelphia. The bishop there closed 40 churches and they got Henningers from our diocese who took care of all the religious art and so forth, asked the bishop there, asked him them to do it. So I knew they were going and I asked them to look for some stations. And um, I told them, you're not allowed to show them to any other priest until I see them first. <laughs> so they came back and he showed me about 20 pictures and I didn't like any of them. And then the next one were these. And I said, that's it. And so um, they're just so beautiful. And then I found out that the name of the church is Mother of Sorrows, where they came from. And I was really touched then because everything that I want to do around here I always ask the Blessed Mother's help, and somehow, when it comes to pass, I have some sign that she had something to do with it. So I wondered if she saw that church, her church closing there, and thought this would be a good church to put them in. But anyway, I'm grateful. And then the ladders in the sanctuary adds a nice touch, doesn't it? <laughs> I thought about Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament, where the angels are going up and down, descending and ascending. So during mass, we have a lot of angels going up and down the, the ladders. I thought I might go up there and preach from there, but I thought you'd be picking me up off the floor. So, and you know what's amazing? <clears throat> the walls that we've been painting all look gray, don't they? Looks, the color looks gray. It's the same exact paint that he painted behind the crucifix this week. It's the same paint that's on the side walls is there, and it doesn't look the same at all, does it? And the reason is the lighting. Uh, this lighting is so bad, and it just doesn't give a, a true impression of the colors. But these are um, incandescent lights, the spotlights on either side. So when they use that kind of lighting, it's the true color. So as I told you, we have some electrical engineers um, designing some new lighting for the church, and hopefully after Christmas that'll come and we'll get a true picture of what everything's supposed to look like. It's, it's great to see the progress. Well, it's the third Sunday of Advent, as I said before, and the church, it, it's a strange kind of feeling because it's a penitential season in some ways. That's why we wear violet vestments on all the days of Advent, except for today. This is supposed to be rose color. It looks pretty pink to me, but um, it's rose colored, a sign of joy a sign of expectation, as the gospel says. John the Baptist came along and he told them, the Messiah is here, he's among you. He's going to, and, and they're all saying, what should we do? He's coming, they've been waiting for the Messiah for centuries, and he's coming, what should we do? They're looking for some profound thing. But notice what John the Baptist does. He says to, the, he says to them, first of all, if you have two coats in your closet and you only wear one of them, take the other one and give it to somebody that doesn't have a coat. That doesn't sound so fantastic, but that's what he's saying. And then he said, if you go to your pantry and if you have a lot of food and you know there's people out there with no food, give some to them. That's what you're supposed to do. The second reading of St. Paul said, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice and let your kindness be shown to all, because the Savior is near. When the Savior is near, then we act differently. And what he's basically saying is, love God above all things and your neighbor as yourself, whatever way you can love your neighbor. And who's our neighbor? From the parable of the Good Samaritan, we know. Our neighbor is any person on earth who needs our help. And we keep that in mind in this Christmas season. He asked the soldiers, he asked the, the, the um, tax collectors, what should we do? And he says, stop collecting more than what's prescribed. They were stealing, they were overcharging the people. So stop doing that, that's what you should do. And then the soldiers, what should we do? He's saying, stop bullying people and be satisfied with your wages. What we should do is in our day-to-day -day life, do it better. 
everything that we do in our day-to-day -day life do it better. And if we do, then we're fulfilling the expectation of the Messiah. And the Messiah came that, that our lives might be changed. He came that we might be baptized with the Holy Spirit as we are and the Holy Spirit's within us. Christmas time is a great time. This Sunday is a great time for joy. There are two little boys who went to visit their grandparents' house a week before Christmas. And nighttime came and they both knelt down beside their beds and they were praying. And one little boy, one of the boys started to say real loud, dear God, I need a bicycle. I need a bat. I need a baseball mitt. And he's going on and on. And his brother says, why are you shouting? God isn't deaf. And he said, I know, but grandma is. <laughs> and then there was a little girl writing a letter to God. And she said, dear God, please, could you build a post office up in heaven? so that grandma can send me Christmas cards again with money in it, <laughs> like she used to. Grandmas do still watch over us from heaven, very much so. And then there's the story of the teacher who said, draw a picture of a scene from your favorite Christmas carol. So little Joey draws a fat man with a brown robe <clears throat> and the teacher says, oh, Joey, is that St. Joseph? He said, no. That's Round John Virgin from Silent Night. <laughs> Remember Round John Virgin? You, you get it? Um, the one I like the best is the teacher who, two days after Christmas vacation, said that we're going to go visit the nativity scene in church tomorrow, and why don't all of you bring a gift for baby Jesus? And so the children came, and she said, just put it in a bag so nobody can see it until you put it by Jesus. So they came, there were candy bars and there were pampers and there were trucks and toys of all kinds. And then one little boy places a seven inch tall statue of the sacred heart of Jesus right next to the manger. And the teacher says, why, why did you give Jesus that? And he said, because I want him to see what he's gonna look like when he grows up. <laughs> and I like that one the best because what does Jesus look like? He's grown up. He's sitting in front of me in this church today, including me. The mystical body of Christ. You and I are Jesus come to full growth in the mystical body of the church. And the Lord needs us to be that presence in the world. And so hopefully this Christmas, if we've looked into our hearts and we've made more room for them because we got rid of things that stand in the way, then the world's gonna be better. The world will be more generous if I'm more generous. The world will be kinder if I am kinder. The world will be loving if I am loving. And so each one of us at Christmas, that's our call, to live in imitation of the Savior who came to redeem us. And it comes down simply, if you have two coats, give one to someone who needs one. God bless you.